I got so many comments on the last YouTube video is could you please show the before and after more clearly? So rather than showing them side by side where they're a little bit small, I just have them go like this so that you can see them. And if you don't understand what's going on, because you haven't seen the other video, go and look at the August 1st video and it will explain everything of what I'm doing. But in short, the first four are looking at how small changes in color at the back add a lot of depth to the picture plane. The whole idea of carving the illusion of depth in the picture plane. And the last two are looking at just orchestrating our attention towards a center of interest and focusing our attention in like that. So hope you find it helpful. This is Ian Roberts and Mastering Composition. Here we find our attention in the foreground and there's so little information at the back that our attention just sort of dismisses it. By just adding a little bit of color and definition and a bit of pink in the sky and the blue in that mountain, we find our attention interplaying between foreground and background. There again you just see it as it was and there you sort of get the sense of the two interplaying, creating more depth. In this one, we sort of have like a sand trap in the foreground. It's holding too much attention and there isn't much going on in the background. So just by darkening the foreground a little bit and creating a little bit of definition back there, we find our attention as an interplay between foreground and background. We move back into the picture plane and that we feel more depth in the whole illusion. Here we find that tree, that 45 degree angle tree on the far right, a little distracting and not much in the background. And just by getting rid of that tree and adding a little bit of color along the back in the water and uh, in the sky, we just sort of have an interplay again between foreground and background. Here the foreground buildings are holding all of our attention. We almost ignore the background. And it's because the two doorways, the one on the far right and that little L-shaped one, are holding a lot of attention. And by diminishing them and adding some color into the background along the water's edge and along the horizon, uh, we sort of have an interplay now between foreground and background. There it is before, and you can kind of feel all your attention in the foreground. And there it is with sort of that interplay between the two. Edges are fundamental in the painting, and here we find so many hard edges, dark to light. Um, value shifts all in that road and the vines. We just find ourselves looking all over the place and not quite sure what to do. And by adjusting the values, we find that now our attention goes down the road back to the end of the vines on the right. So there it is before, and there we find we're sort of getting it more adjusted. Here again, you can see the quality of the edges in that pale yellow ochre in the foreground and behind those two trees on the left and then in the fields. Those contrasts between the darks that surround it, it just keeps pulling our attention all over the picture plane without any clear sense of direction. And if you darken those down and just give a little bit more information at the background, you can see how our attention now slides into the distance in a kind of orchestrated compositional structure. So there you see it again, and then there's the effect when you adjust the edges. Here we see a mother and a daughter studying. That foreground table, though, is taking a lot of attention, and also our attention tends to sort of drift out of the top of the painting also because of the light there. So by just putting a bit of a gradation in the top of the painting and darkening that table, you find your attention is just brought into the intimacy of those two figures. There it is again, and there it is with that more condensed view right into the, where we want the viewer to look.